I'm Dr. John Michael Savato, a lifelong practitioner of the ancient, unnamed, and time-honored practices of Italian folk magic, occultism, metaphysics, and mysticism, which is often referred to in the present day as stregoneria. Now, stregoneria is actually just the generic word in Italian. As many of you have heard me say in the past, it's the Italian word for witchcraft. It doesn't refer to a particular path or a particular approach. It's not a codified practice or, or a specific tradition. It, it definitely and unequivocally has nothing to do whatsoever with the practice or the observance of the old pre-Christian religious sects that worship the, the god and goddess, including the worship of Diana and Dianus, or Tana and Tanus, Uni and Tana, or Tinia, or any of the other religious sects uh, from the uh, ancient pagan world. It's unrelated uh, to the questionable mythos surrounding Aradia, the, the uh, love child of Diana and Lucifer. It simply and always has been the generic word for witchcraft. In Italian, stregoneria. Now, witchcraft is interesting because historically the word itself has always been one that was applied toward others, usually with a pejorative intention by outsiders, not by practitioners. In most cases, it was a word that was used by the Roman or Anglican church, later by the myriad of, of, uh, of offshoots of Protestant fundamentalism, especially in America and Great Britain. And actual practitioners in Italy, and in fact, throughout most of Europe, Africa, and Asia, would not have even begun to use the word witchcraft or witch to describe themselves. And to this day, one would be hard pressed to find a, a practitioner in Italy over the age of 50 who uses that word to describe their spiritual practices. Contrary to the misrepresentations made by some of the, uh, the followers of a somewhat dubious 20th century neo-pagan religion uh, known as Stregaria, a practice that was created in the United States, not Italy, which bears no resemblance to Italian witchcraft or folk magic or even to the Italian culture, the word stregoneria uh, does not refer to the practice of Catholic conjure or syncretic religious practices that arose in the 13th and 14th centuries among Catholic metaphysicians and, and uh, practitioners and healers and seers. So, so let's first be real clear about that. While the, the, the um, ad religious adherence to stregaria would like us to believe that, it's simply not true. For the most part, there are between five and, and say, eight different approaches or generalized uh, traditions of magic in Italy. Two of those uh, whose roots can easily date back to before the Common Era, and three of which are clearly traditions that were inspired or at least influenced uh, in part by Catholicism, 20th century neo-paganism, and pop culture New Age practices. So until a couple years ago, to the best of my knowledge, after 20 years of intensive research, um, I can confidently tell you that there were no lifelong practitioners of the Italian magical practice teaching these traditions to the general public. Now, there were a couple brilliant authors who had written books about Italian folk magic and particularly about Italian American folk magic, um, but, but no, no real in-depth courses being offered. And understand that although these are closed traditions, they're not um, neo-pagan traditions. So they don't pretend to be connected to the old religions of Etruria or Tuscany. And so they're not coven-oriented practices, even though some families um, did and still do participate in the religious uh, um, observances of Dianic covens. That was their religion. That wasn't their practice of the craft. So when I began to invest uh, the, the past 10 years into creating the first comprehensive, academically intact, uh, culturally appropriate course on Stregoneria, I knew that what I was doing would be controversial. I knew it would be difficult. First off, it would piss off a lot of neo-pagans who rather than investing the time and intelligence into carefully uh, considering such things as the 
uh, whether the generally accepted and received narratives of the 20th century occultists and neo-pagan reconstructionists uh, that were spoon-fed to their early followers, people like Gardner and so forth, um, maybe that those, those stories were possibly problematic. Uh, or maybe that there was agendas that were involved that maybe weren't, um, you know, seen right off the bat. Uh, those people would rather adopt a fundamentalist approach, devoid of skepticism and rife with historical and anthropological and scientific inaccuracies and consistencies and, and outright lies. It would also piss off, I knew, those whose particular expression of pop culture witchcraft is derived from the, uh, the intersectionality of the powerful, long-needed feminist uprisings of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, um, when, they, when they converged with the fanciful and highly problematic fundamentalism that we find in certain neo-pagan expressions of witchcraft that began to grow in popularity in the 1980s. This would include cults of personality that grew out of witches who, who uh, self-proclaimed witches, who took to television and other media as a means of brand building and 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 people who engaged in a a rather disgracefully blatant misrepresentation of some of the most foundational traditions of the historic craft apparently leaving behind any desire for for accuracy or ethical representation even hygiene and proper hair conditioning and sensible makeup strategies i mean these people Seemed, it seemed to them that the object was to be exotic. The object was to get attention. And, and the cultural appropriation and lies being peddled on television and newspapers and, and in privately owned trinket shops and bookstores and places like Salem reached a cacophonic pitch of, of total disgrace in, in very short order, some of which remains to the current day. And so we saw absurd proclamations from some of those megalomaniacal celebrity witches ranging from claims of controlling volca volcanoes in Italy to issuing edicts of witches do's and don'ts. And then came the even more senseless, even more absurd claims of hereditary pedigree, as though we were supposed to be impressed that someone came from a long line of practitioners in their family. And I can tell you, as somebody who does come from a long line of practitioners, I promise you, no one gets bonus points. No one gets inherent gifts. No one gets skills just because your mom or your grandmother or your uncles practiced our traditions before you came along. That's just absurd. And finally, of course, there, there are those who choose to forego any and all common sense, who insist that the craft originated with and belongs exclusively to those who were born with a vagina even though the historic record easily refutes such nonsense, even though anthropology refutes such nonsense, they're too busy counting how many men versus how many women are in every conference, every coven, every workshop, and every school of the craft, rather than investing that energy in learning to dismantle the illusion of binary gender and sexual identity so that we can begin to practice real magic. And after a year of, of teaching my first course, uh, 26 modules, 52 weeks, um, a course on Svegonaria 101, which received truly humbling, beautiful, and moving accolades from those involved in the course, uh, we found ourselves in the middle of the COVID pandemic. In fact, uh, we found, I found myself in February of 2020 and March of 2020 um, struggling with COVID-19 myself. People throughout our world are in greater need of healing, emotional support, spiritual context, and connection than, than at any other time that I can recall in my life. And, and so a group of five practitioners whom I, I deeply respect and love from various traditions and paths, some traditional, some neo-pagan, um, some ATR derived, and others like myself, secular humanist paths, decided that we had to respond to this need. We had to respond to the, the obvious void that was left in our metaphysical community by moving beyond the sectarianism of the past, uh, the, the, the sectarianism that's made the, the past 100 years of neo-pagan 
witchcraft and magic and occultism um, to bring a more postmodern collective together, a grassroots community dedicated to celebrating our diversity, committed to sharing our stories so that we could better understand the stories and the experiences from other traditions, from other practitioners, and devoted to providing some of the most honest, raw, practical lectures, classroom discussions, and community dialogue on how to create a postmodern community of magical and metaphysical practitioners, alchemists, philosophers, and mystics. And, and because we know that the world is facing challenging economic times, because we know that it's difficult for all of us, we decided to do something no one else had done before. I know my phone is going to start uh, blowing up as, as this is being broadcast, so I apologize in advance for the dings and stuff in the back, in the background. We set aside the importance of, of being properly compensated during this pandemic, this group of, of, of core practitioners and faculty members. We knew that we weren't going to be able to be properly compensated during this pandemic recovery period. And, and so we formed the Inner Alchemy Mystery School and Collective as a place where the average seeker could become involved for less than $1.65 a day and have unlimited access to the monthly classes, the course content, live discussion groups, um, grassroots community interaction, and so much more that simply isn't available on social media or that you can't get from weekend events in an ongoing, self-paced, open, and affirming experience on a safe platform. And that means for $1.64 a day, the average seeker could take any or all of the courses that our five main faculty members and, and other members that will be coming on board um, offer whenever they want. Representing five different and distinct traditions and practices, they could interact with the, the instructors one-on-one. -on -one. They could interact with the instructors in, in group video sessions and the other students in group video sessions. They could begin to forge relationships with one another on a, on a clean, safe, uncensored, and diverse social networking platform. And, and we could together create a means of teachers supporting, encouraging, and helping promote other teachers who were struggling in many cases to keep roofs over our heads during the crisis and students and seekers and practitioners supporting other students and seekers and practitioners. In a time when the pandemic is behind us, um, then, then membership in the collective would cost twice as much as it does now. But even at $3 a day, it's going to be a remarkable and unparalleled value. But we want to make sure that all of those who become involved in this grassroots effort now during these months of healing and recovery and rebuilding would never see the cost of their membership increase a dime. They would always simply pay $1.64 a day. Of course, the instructors are not really being compensated, like I said, for, for our work at this time. We don't charge instructors a dime for being part of the collective. And the profit sharing we enjoy generally means that we recoup a fraction of the money and time and effort that we invest into creating content right now and providing value for our membership. But we know that as the word spreads in time, our faculty will be properly compensated. So we're investing in you. And, and they won't have to worry about their good names and reputations being associated with questionable characters who thrive on creating drama uh, or whose erratic, deeply disturbing, and awful, uh, often awful, unintelligible rants and unbalanced behavior has consistently driven a wedge between serious and committed practitioners and the pop culture world of commercialized witchy shops in places like New Orleans and Salem, hurting the names and the reputations of real practitioners who may have shops and, and you know, private practices in those very cities and elsewhere. And our members won't have to worry about buying tickets to events with the expectation of hearing from some respected authors and experts and practitioners who were abruptly removed from the event when the temperamental self-aggrandizing troll running the event didn't like being held accountable for the lies or behavior that we see from them on social media. Now, any of you 
know that that uh, um, the, over the past year, I've offered my Svig on Naria 101 course. And that course has been something of a YouTube sensation. People throughout the world have kindly praised the, the, the benefits that they've gotten from the course, um, calling it well worth every dime of the $600 they paid. But I decided that leadership, real leadership, mandates investment. So I'm single-handedly covering all of the costs of building this platform, maintaining the network, processing memberships and membership uh, uh, credit card fees and all of that. All of the promotional work, including our weekly live podcasts and, and video casts called Magic Medicine and Mysticism, which many of you have seen, uh, and which features some of our faculty and uh, various guests from throughout the, the uh, field. And, and I agreed to throw my entire year-long Stregonaria 101 course and my advanced Stregonaria course in, including it in the membership, so, so that there are no additional costs, all covered by that $1.64 a day charter membership when you become a member of the Inner Alchemy Mystery School and Collective. Our initial goal is to partner with and, and add four or five more faculty members to our school over the next three months and to grow our enrollment membership by an additional 100 students over the next 90 days. And so we're going to offer anybody who wants to poke around and see what postmodern community uh, of, of uh, magical practitioners could look like a week long, risk free, no cost opportunity to check us out. Just drop in on some of our classes. You can see the URL here on the screen. Join a discussion group uh, or, or experience the joy and fellowship that exists in our social network on the platform itself. And after seven days, we're confident you're going to see the value in spending just $12 a week to be part of what we're doing and have unlimited access to all of these different courses as often as you want to take them, whenever you want to take them. And don't take my word for it. Here are some of my, what my own students have, ha, have uh, had to say about my course alone before we even had the incredible blessing of adding practitioners and faculty members who now offer courses on Saxony witchcraft and herbal witchery and healing, the seven African powers, hoodoo, conjure, folk magic, Hi, John Michael. Through the inspiration of Rosemary, we were able to gather this gift for you amidst the chaos of the past week. And so we want to thank you for your leadership, compassion, love, and a seat at the table. Thank you for the healing and medicine to reclaim our power and place the blocks of a strong foundation to build on. Thank you for creating a safe space and giving us the responsibility to create our own. Thank you for sharing the wisdom and knowledge of our ancestors through the timeless, authentic traditions of Stegen area, and for being present for every moment of our growth and awareness to blossom and unfold every nurturing step of the way. And so it is, with love and gratitude, we bring you this video as a small token of our appreciation I hope you enjoy. It's late at night here, so I'm just going to whisper this one out. But I just wanted to say that this class was incredibly powerful and so beautiful. And I appreciate all that you've done on a profound level. And I look forward to all that is to come. And I'm just in awe of all that you give and share. And I love this community that has come together. Thanks to all of your hard work and your beautiful intentions. Bye. Hi, John Michael. Thank you so much for everything that you've shared with us over the past couple months. Um, it's been such an incredible learning process for me and I have been noticing um, in my own practice how much your wisdom has positively impacted and um, I just wanted to extend my gratitude to you for everything that you are 
so generously sharing with us and um, let you know that I appreciate and am so grateful for all of the work that you um, have been have been sharing with us. So thank you and um, I can't wait to learn more. Hi, John Michael. I just wanted to take a few minutes to express the utmost gratitude that I have that you're in my life. I'm so grateful that you came into my life this year, well, now last year, 2020. And it was such a beautiful balance to a year that was very difficult. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is that you taught me, you gave me the tools to be able to connect to my ancestors, to the people that I really loved and then but to understand the depth of that that it's not only the ancestors that i knew but it's the unknown also and that um i'm such a black sheep in my family that i don't come from nowhere so i i become more rooted with my own with my own with the people in my own family uh for that reason the second thing is that you've taught how to not be afraid to connect with the divine to not connect with source to understand that we're all part of that we're all part of that divine essence um, that it's in us, it's without us, it's to the left, to the right, to everywhere. So that's another very valuable lesson that I've learned from you. And you've also taught the connection of the source and the ancestors and the self for empowerment. So you've done so much. All of your hard work is always seen. All I have to do if I did a little bit of a little bit of a John Michael fix, all I have to do is just watch one of your videos that are open for everyone look back at the course uh, that you've, I, I'm always so impressed with your mind and how brilliant you are that you've actually been able to methodically put the teachings almost in a file cabinet system where it makes perfect sense and that every single, every single week builds on another week and it really does. Um, I'm, I'm in awe of that. I'm at an absolutely awe of the mind that you have and the ability that you have to do it. I'm deeply moved by your commitment to social justice issues um, and how much you care about things that really have really nothing to do with your life personally, per se, but you still care anyway. And I, I, found, I find that so completely refreshing to have someone um, that's in this world that, that understands that. And all the, all the work that you've done, all the work that you put into the classes, all the work that you put into everything that you do every single day, just know how loved you are and how seen all of your work really is and how you've significantly played a role in allowing me or giving me the permission to allow myself, if that makes sense, um, to be myself. You know, I have so much more growing to do as a human being, as a non-binary person. Um, it, it's, it's, you've, you've made me feel like I'm not alone in this, you know, whether it's a person interested in the craft, uh, to use that energy to do good, uh, to empower myself as a human being, so I can then do even better work to help other people once I get out of my own way. And it's, it's a process that I work with every single day and um, where other people, they kind of, they recognized me a little bit, but then they stood in my way. You didn't do that. You know, you, you, you helped me move away from the more superstitious, what you call the woo-woo, which I love the woo-woo, actually. Really cool things happen. Uh, it's pretty neat. But you help me move away from that and be into my my own Aquarian nature, because I'm an Aquarius too, um, of I, I, as I need proof. I need evidence of, of what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling. And you've really given me that. You've given me community. You've given me acceptance. Um, you, you've given me this idea of personal empowerment and the connection to the source and my ancestors. And I, I will be grateful to you always for that. I'm grateful for all the work you do, for all the writing you do. And just, I absolutely love and adore you. And I will always hold space for you. And you're always in my prayers. And I just wanted to take a few minutes to just express this to you. I love you very much. And thank you. Hi, Jim Michael. This is my appreciation video for you, our wonderful teacher in the arts of magia, of Stregonaria Italiano. I don't know if I'm mixing Spanish with Italian, but you know. Um, I just want to say thank you so much, Gatsi, for all that you've taught us and, you know, that the, the class has helped out so much. 
um, in connecting with my ancestors and also like deepening my personal practice of the craft and it has helped me with my clients and you know in, in areas like I couldn't even imagine like 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 my cooking you know my my grandmother would be, would be so happy so I want to thank you again um for sharing this wonderful opportunity and sharing you know part of your family with us and now we are all straight up family so again thank you so much John Michael, it's me, Alyssa. I just wanted to hop on here and say thank you so much for creating this class. Um, when I reached out to you months and months ago, I was at the lowest point of my life and um, I was just looking for some type of control, something I can do where I could have some sense of where the future was going to take me in my life. And um, your class couldn't have come at a more perfect timing because not only was I able to connect with my ancestors which I was craving so much um, I also learned what I should be trying to control and what I should be trying to walk away from um, I also have quicker than I ever imagined started becoming the person that I've always wanted to be and I'm so excited to see um, what the next year even takes me um, to be maybe that person I have in my mind of who I think I am. Um, I also wanted to say thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to continue our studies by um, coming up with this new social media platform. So it's not the end for us, it's just the beginning. And um, I also want to say thank you for helping me meet like-minded people who um, I know I can reach out to any of them and they're so supportive. And um, I don't have anyone like that in my life that I can talk about my interests with without looking like the crazy person in the room or um, it's just so nice. Um, I've never felt so not alone before in a weird way um, since you've started this class because I know I can just reach out to a handful of people and they all um, are so supportive and um, inviting and um, I'm just forever grateful for everything that you've done for us and for being the person who's been there for me. Um, Whenever I had a serious problem the last six months, I didn't have anyone that I could reach out to. You were the person that I um, immediately went to because I needed help and you never made me feel stupid. And you always reminded me that um, I had the tools and the power within myself to fix whatever situation it was, but it was so um, heart touching to know that you genuinely cared and wanted to help me. And I've never had that before in my life. I've never had somebody who um, was like that to me. So um, I just want to let you know that I'm forever grateful um, to you. And um, I'll see you later. Bye. Hi, Jan Michael. I just wanted to say thank you for everything you have helped me with and taught me. And your traditions will live on. Hi, Rose. I just want to tell you how happy I am that I found this group and how grateful I am to you for letting me join a few weeks late. Um, but I got here and the amount of love and attention and giving and everything that you've poured into this class uh, I, I don't know I don't know how to thank you enough I was at the point where I was just going to probably give up on my path I didn't know where I fit in anymore and I didn't think there was ever going to be any place that I would and somehow I was led to you and I think 
that was for a reason. And I'm very happy that I'm here and I'm very happy to be in this class and to have gotten to know you and everyone. And this has just been the most amazing experience in a year where everything has gone to hell in a handbasket for everyone. Uh, that that this has come out of it is just just wonderful and it's because of you and your kindness and your generosity are beyond and I don't know how I would be able to thank you in enough words that would express how much I am grateful so thank you thank you thank you thank you grazie ciao Hello, John Michael, it's Tara, and I'm here to share with you some well-deserved words of appreciation. And I just want to thank you for your existence, for being here, for your light, for all of your knowledge and sharing your inspiration, your kindness. Um, I love the connection that we have with Ma, which is just a um, really beautiful thing to bring us together even more and I'm very thankful for the group that you've created for us to share with the information that you uh, have also opened up to, you know, all of us others. And it's really nice to have a group of us together to even just share what our, everyone else's different backgrounds are. And everything just, for me personally, came at a very divine timing and, um, uh, it's like every day I'm very, very thankful. Um, <laughs> it's like, oh, I have so much to say. And then <laughs> also it's just like everything is here and is with us. And I just want you to know that uh, my gratitude continues on. And I do trust that you feel that and you know. And um, I love you and thank you for being here. You're very, very appreciated, very loved. Have a beautiful day and moment. <laughs> Bye. It's hard to put into words what it means to suddenly, after a lifetime of otherness and strange experiences, to feel like I have come home. Thank you for teaching outside of your bloodlines. Thank you for calling the children of the Italian diaspora home when we did not have another. Thank you for the warmth, joy, insight, and honesty that you bring to this work. I am eternally grateful, and I can't wait to see how this all unfolds. Thank you. Hi, John michael I just wanted to take a minute to say thank you so much for all your time and work and energy and love that you've put into your class. This class has been a gift that I can't even begin to describe. Thank you so much. Kitchen witchery, Appalachian magic, LGBTQ studies, and so much more. So, so take a listen. Folks, there are no words to express my gratitude for the, the kind and loving words all unsolicited from real students, real seekers who've become my tribe, my family, whose impressions of my course you just heard and saw. But it's not all about me. It's about all of us. It's about this project being part of a larger movement known as the Charter for Compassion, which we proudly endorse and hold as the, the standard for all of our courses, all of our conduct and engagement at the Inner Alchemy Mystery School. And so I'm gonna leave you with this short message from the Charter for Compassion to help you better understand what we're talking about when we say that we're building a postmodern school of magic, witchcraft, medicism, uh, medicine and mysticism devoted to celebrating diversity, inclusion, and hearing one another's stories. So I encourage you to come take a look at what we have to offer. Join us by visiting www.inneralchemy.online forward slash collective and take a look around for seven days. And now let's hear from the charter. 
The principle of compassion lies at the heart of all religious, ethical, and spiritual traditions. Calling us always to treat all others as we wish to be treated ourselves. Compassion impels us to work tirelessly to alleviate the suffering of our fellow creatures. To dethrone ourselves from the center of our world and put another there. To honor the inviolable sanctity of every single human being. Treating everybody without exception. With absolute justice, equity, and respect. It is also necessary in both public and private life to refrain consistently and empathically from inflicting pain. To act or speak violently out of spite, chauvinism, or self-interest. To impoverish, exploit, or deny basic rights to anybody. And to incite hatred by denigrating others, even our enemies. Is a denial of our common humanity. We acknowledge that we have failed to live compassionately. And that some have even increased the sum of human misery in the name of religion. We therefore call upon all men and women to restore compassion to the center of morality and religion. To return to the ancient principle that any interpretation of scripture that breeds violence, hatred, or disdain is illegitimate. To ensure that youth are given accurate and respectful information about other traditions, religions, and cultures. To encourage a positive appreciation of cultural and religious diversity. To cultivate an informed empathy with the suffering of all human beings. Even those regarded as enemies. We urgently need to make compassion a clear, luminous, and dynamic force in our polarized world. Rooted in a principled determination to transcend selfishness. Compassion can break down political, dogmatic, ideological, and religious boundaries. Born of our deep interdependence, compassion is essential for human relationships and to a fulfilled humanity. It is the path to enlightenment and indispensable in the creation of a just economy and a peaceful global community.